conversation at River Landing. This is a furl sponsored event in which we are meeting um, senior staff and uh, residents for um, a conversation about their lives and times. Today we are delighted to welcome Betsy Seaton, who is the recently appointed Director of Community Relations at River Landing. Helen Shields, it's lovely to be back with you Thank again you. Nice. for another round. And I'd remind you, just going forward, before we get to Betsy, or before we finish with <laughs> Betsy, that um, next week uh, we will have our first of six residents. Um, and we look forward to that. And we hope you'll be able to join us at the same time and place. So Betsy, welcome. Thank you. To I'm delighted to be here. Um, we know you as Betsy. Um, we assume your friends know you as Betsy. If you, um, was that a name you grew up with? It and is, it is. And I'm so glad you're asking this question because this is one of my, um, one of the things I'm most proud of. I am named after my grandmother. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandmother um, was Elizabeth Wood. She was a Betty. Uh, and when I was born, I was born Elizabeth Wood Walker. And, uh, and she, um, she's no longer with us, but she was a pistol uh -huh. and uh, a really wonderful, wonderful woman who later in life was known affectionately as B. And, uh, and so uh, I was named Elizabeth Wood Walker, uh, but as soon as I popped out, I was Betsy. I've never been an Elizabeth. I have, I have always uh -huh. been a Betsy and, uh, and I love it. I've always loved being Betsy because it's, um, it's a unique name. There's not many of us. And, uh, and so if somebody says Betsy in a room, I know. I'm it's pretty you. sure it's me. <laughs> <laughs> so that answers the question that if you had another name, uh, or what would it be? And I, I would stick with Betsy. Right. I, am, uh, I, am, I am a Betsy through and through. Good. Great. Uh, tell us where you were born and where you grew up and something about your childhood. Sure. So I was... Born in Norfolk, Virginia, uh, but lived there just very briefly, uh, maybe a year, year and a half. I don't have many memories. And after that, we moved to Winston-Salem, which is really where I consider myself a native. And, uh, and so grew up in Winston-Salem, um, have one sister, and uh, my mother and father and I, um, we just, uh, my child was wonderful. They were, they were so great, and it was so lovely. Um, <coughs> My sister is also named after the other grandmother. She is uh, Mary Tucker. And, uh, but anyway, so grew up in Winston uh, and then I went to college at Western Carolina, uh, go Catamounts. Catamounts and after right. that, um, moved out to Nashville, Tennessee. Uh -huh. And I lived out in Nashville, Tennessee for about 10 years. And then my husband and I decided to move back to, um, to the triad. I've, I recently learned that's called a boomerang, is that you're born somewhere, you go out and you boomerang back, oh, okay. and so I boomeranged back to the triad, and we are we love Greensboro. We we um, we've been here about six years. Great. What what were you doing in Nashville? So I worked out. Uh, I worked in the music industry, and uh, and so music has always been a really important part of my life. From singing and playing piano, I was in band. Um, it was the quintessential music nerd, if you will. Um, I, was, I really enjoyed um, all things music growing up. And, and in college, I knew that music was my path, um, but I didn't know quite what to do. And my professors and my advisors at Western said, have you thought about the music industry? And, uh, and I hadn't. And so I, um, I went, I uh, did an internship at Capitol Records, um, which has since turned into, I think, to uh, EMI or Universal, but uh, interned there in the publicity department and then started working at the Country Music Association mm -hmm. and worked there for about eight or nine years, um, ultimately uh, in their membership and balloting department. And so I was responsible for signing members up to vote for the CMA Awards um, and handling the balloting for the Hall of Fame and the, the award show. Wonderful. Wow. Yeah. 
I could I could see at least three furrow courses <laughs> in your future. That, that uh, I'm in. Uh, we'll talk about that in the fall. <laughs> so, um, and then you came back to this area. I did. So I, um, uh, my husband and I met in 2011, and were married in 2014. His name is Eric, and uh, and so he was a, a native Nashvilleian. And, uh, and so he, um, and they're pretty rare. When, and you got him out of Nashville. I drug him right out. And so uh, about, I think it was a year we had been married, and I said, hey, can we move home? And, uh, and he, what, what a saint he was. He said, of course, let's do it. And um, no questions asked. Jumped in the car. We grabbed the cat, and, uh, and we moved. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, we've had just, a wonderful time here. My um, my whole family is is here. So my sister and um, and her family are just a stone's throw away from here, maybe about a mile from River Landing. And then my mother and my stepfather are in Winston, and my father's in Greensboro. Wonderful. Okay. So we are surrounded. We we very much have a village. So. And while we're talking about family, um, I, I warned you before we started this that I you can hardly stop me from talking about my daughter. Um, her name is Eleanor Louise, and she is uh, she is ten months old, and is just the light of our lives. And How cool. it's wonderful. wonderful. It yeah. is absolutely wonderful. We we wanted and, and waited and prayed for her for a very long time, and uh, and are finally blessed. We're blessed to have her in late May um, of 2020, my little pandemic baby. <laughs> and so we're very, we're very blessed. Wow. I look forward to the day that I can bring her here and introduce her to all of the residents. Yeah. <laughs> she would love it. Oh, she'll be adored. <laughs> the pictures of her are, you all have some great things to look forward to. Well, um, you mentioned that you um, had been in Nashville in the country music industry. Um, what other things have you done prior to River Landing, and how right. do you think they helped you prepare for this job? That's a great question. So I think when you look at my career, there is a theme. It has been an amazing, wonderful, exciting career that I've had so far. And But the theme is, is building relationships, and it's building um, trust and having communication and um, at CMA, it was working with members and recruiting members and, um, and working with groups like that, uh, working with events, working with kind of the marketing side. Um, after that, I was at Children's Home Society, which many of our residents may be familiar with. Uh, CHS is a foster care and adoption agency here in Greensboro, but it's statewide. And my role there was the community engagement director. And so I was responsible for all the corporate sponsorships and events and volunteer programs statewide. And uh, through CHS, I met River Landing. And uh, as many of you may know, uh, the uh, gift drive around uh, the holidays is for CHS, is for children in foster care. And, uh, and I mentioned this in a conversation with Tom on As the River Turns, but to reiterate, uh, many of these children come into foster care with nothing, and they come in with a garbage bag, mm -hmm. and it's heartbreaking. And uh, through no fault of their own, they, you know, they were just born into the wrong family or into a family that needs a little bit of help. And um, and so, by providing a holiday and a Christmas for these kids is so important and so impactful. And River Landing was one of our biggest sponsors of the Hope for the Holidays gift program. And I remember being here in 2016, the first time meeting with Tom and Lisa and the leadership team and thinking, what a neat place. What a, what a wonderful um, atmosphere and an uplifting group. And it was so genuine and kind. And so to be here five years later uh, as an employee and to find that that, that kindness is, is real. It's, it wasn't an act. It was, it was truly how this, this wonderful place is. I, I feel very lucky to be here. And I think I remember somewhere in between those two times, between being here now and um, when you met the, met the folks in the beginning, were you a board member for I was. River Landing? I was. So I joined the board in 2019. I am no longer on the board, <laughs> so of course. Um, but uh, really enjoyed serving on the board and and got to know 
um, the staff and, and so many great things about River Landing. And, um, and so it was a really neat opportunity for me to, uh, to get another, another view into just how wonderful this place is. So your title, if I have it correctly, is Director of um, Community Relations. It is, it is. So what's the, um, there's the title and then there's the job. <laughs> <laughs> so the title is very nice, but um, tell folks a little bit about the job right. and uh, what, what a day looks like if there is such a thing as a Mm -hmm. Well, I have joked that this job was made for me, that I am just so lucky to be here. And um, so the majority of my day is spent uh, working with our residents of the future. Uh, and so those are the folks that are on our waiting list. Um, and then also encouraging people to join our wait list. Uh, I think that as we look um, in the next couple of years and as we're seeing trending too, <coughs> uh, there are so, um, there is just this, a large amount of people that are doing coming into CCRCs like River Landing, and um, and so encouraging people to get on that wait list that could be mm -hmm. five years long. It could it could be. Um, anyways, I think that was one of the most surprising things for me mm -hmm. that when I when I started here and got to know River Landing of how, just how long people it may be to get to get a residence here and to become a resident here. So I do a lot of tours. Many, um, many of you have seen, maybe seen me trotting around and um, pointing to the pool or our new wellness center or our new clubhouse. And I feel very lucky that I get to have that opportunity to showcase such beautiful amenities. And uh, uh, I didn't. I feel like I didn't. I joke that I didn't do any of the work to get us here, but I get to say, "Look at this really beautiful gym. <laughs> Look at our pickleball court." And it makes my job really easy. Uh, and then, I, of course, I work with an incredible team. Uh, everyone knows Martha Lofton and Amy Bray. And, uh, and so Martha is um, our community relations specialist. And, uh, and then Amy is our move-in uh, marketing coordinator. And so just a great team that, um, that have been so uh, helpful and wonderful as I've gotten uh, settled into this role over the past two and a half months. I'm just curious as, as you're talking, um, how wide a net do you cast in terms of um, geography about where to, like, how do you decide where to go to, to recruit people? That's a great question. So the majority of people um, are around this area, are yeah. in the triad. And so because maybe their family's here or maybe this is where they've grown up and mm -hmm. this is where they want to they wanna be. Um, but we do have some other areas that, um, you know, the Chacoinity area, we have lots of people that have moved from that area or the Sanford area, um, Aiken, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. there, it's interesting that there are little pockets um, yeah. of, and, and I think that that speaks to how incredible River Landing is, is that one person comes and sees it and says, oh my gosh, this is incredible, and they tell a friend, and yeah. it's a domino effect, and so... Uh, we're lucky, as everybody knows, to have the two sister communities of Scotia Village and Glen Eyre. Uh, so t it typically for the Raleigh area or um, a little bit further east, uh, we try to say, if you want to stay in that area, we've got some really great places there too. And um, it's a team. It's really, I feel very supported. I work very closely with Laura Lowe, who is our director of sales and marketing um, for Presbyterian Homes. And she really helps with uh, with yeah. with uh, finding those radiuses. And yeah. um, for example, um, we have some virtual events coming up at the end of the month that um, that we have targeted for Greensboro. And so, and we're going to drop off little brunch baskets, uh, thanks to our dining staff, uh, with little quiches and scones and mimosas, which is really fun. <laughs> and so, uh, the virtual world has caused us to really think outside the box and uh, it's been a really, it's a, it's a neat opportunity to think of new ways to engage with folks. Interesting, interesting. Even though you have not been here for a long while yet, um, what would be one of your favorite memories of this short time that you've been here? I think getting to know the residents um, and I, I'm lucky enough to sit, I think most people know that I sit near the ATM um, of Bank of Oak Ridge and being able to have residents pop in and say hello, uh, getting to know 
their story, why they picked River Landing, what drew them here. Mm -hmm. um, and then also the same with our residents of the future. Uh, I, um, if you have walked by my office, you might have seen me on the phone. Uh, and so it's kind of glued to my ear. Um, but it's been so exciting to get to know everyone and so and to spend time and um, learning lots about children and grandchildren and um, what's important to folks. And I think that uh, that that's what makes me tick. That's what drives me. And, uh, and so it's been, those stories have been so wonderful. If, if you were, again, this is sparked by what you just said, um, in this day and time, 2021, on whatever date we are in um, <laughs> April or May, but, um, what is, is there a, a profile of a resident of the future? Hmm. That's a great question. I um, I tend to talk about, I refer to it as the flavor of a CCRC. And I think that there are different, there are different flavors. Mm -hmm. But for me, what I have found at River Landing is it's people that who are active, um, active in volunteer groups, active in civic and faith groups, active um, physically. And so people that like to get out and go walking or golf or go um, play some pickleball. Mm -hmm. uh, and so and it's the group of helpers, and I think it's people that want to give back with their time and, um, and their talents, and they want to make an impact on a community, and they did that before they moved here, but now that they're here at River Landing, that it just is compounded, and it's, yeah. it's really beautiful, and I think as we look at residents of the future, that we want people that are active, and we want to maintain that, that really lively, vibrant spirit that we have. And, um, and that's, that's how I talk about it. And I think that isn't for everyone, and that's fine. But, um, but with River Landing, I think it's important that if you're going to be here, we've got this whole wide array of opportunities. Helen, we were talking about this yeah. earlier, mm -hmm. that you can't even do it all when, it's, uh, when, when all, everything's up and running. And so people that want to take advantage of that, I think, is really yeah. important. I think I've heard lots of people joke about, you know, when they say, oh, when I retire, I won't have to do anything. And, and <laughs> I suspect in lots of cases, apropos exactly what you're saying, yeah. that date books are much more in much more active <laughs> use now than they might have been in the last several years mm -hmm. of work. I always mm -hmm. say, what is this retirement? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm busier now than I was 10 years ago. Well, now you told us a few things about yourself, and you're here. What would you like us to know that we haven't asked or you haven't already told us? So um, I, I am probably 99.9% .9 on the extrovert scale. I get all of my energy from things like this, from talking and, and greeting. So if I have not had a chance to meet you, uh, please stop by and say hello. And, um, uh, you know, I think um, I've talked a little bit about Eric and Eleanor, my, fam my wonderful family, and I look forward to the day that uh, they can be here, and you can get to know them as well. Um, they're a huge, important part of my life. Um, but yeah, I, I think the main thing is I invite, um, I look forward to getting to know everyone and getting an opportunity to um, spend more time with, with all of our residents. Um, if the details were taken care of, um, who are three people in all of time um, that you'd like to sit and have a chat with or a meal with, yes. either together or, or separately? So I have to tell that you sent me some of these questions beforehand, right. and I, this is the one that I thought the most about. Uh -huh. And it was, it was tough. It was a tough decision of, mm -hmm. of you know, um, of course, I thought of Da Vinci and Einstein and all of these incredible things, and I actually probably landed on people that... <laughs> are a little bit less remarkable. <laughs> so, uh, my first is, um, is his name is Bill Watterson. He is still living. Uh, and he is the author of Calvin and Hobbes, um, oh. which is, I know that that is so silly, but Calvin and Hobbes really shaped my childhood. Yeah. And, uh, and I think um, when I met my husband, Eric, uh, our first Christmas together, he bought me the whole the volume of like bound books of Calvin and Hobbes. And my father said, 
well, if he isn't the one for you, I don't know who is. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Bill Watterson is a notoriously private person, so there's yeah. not much information about him. Um, nobody even knows where he lives. It's a very interesting thing, but that to me would be mm. the first, that I've always wanted to learn more about him and how he created it, and I have so many questions. Um, the second uh, would probably be, this was a toss-up between Jim Henson of the Muppets mm. Um, and Freddie Mercury from Queen. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought both of those would be a really interesting, I can't imagine. Um, and then the third um, is my grandfather. So I never had the opportunity to meet him. He uh, passed away when my mother was 22. Mm -hmm. um, and I mentioned my grandmother, Elizabeth B. Um, and uh, it was her husband. And they have this beautiful love story um, Basically, my grandmother and her sister married my grandfather and his brother. Oh. And so it creates something called double second, double first cousins. <laughs> and it, sound, it sounds a little iffy, you know, and, but, but it's, <laughs> it's all very legal. Uh, but, um, but anyways, it creates something called double first cousins. So my mother and her cousins were actually closer. Um, they were as close as blood as sisters, basically. Yeah. And so... Uh, Anyways, uh, I got to know my great uncle, his brother. I knew um, my great aunt, who was my grandmother's sister, but I never had an opportunity to meet him. My name was his name was John, and uh, and so John Wood, and uh, and it's supposedly there is a picture of him very early in his life that he had curly curly hair, and he is the only person in our family that we think might have created this curly <laughs> hair. So. <laughs> I'd love to ask him, uh, <laughs> among other things. Those are my Very people. Those are, those are who yeah. I would have dinner oh, with. Oh, it sounds like it would be a fun dinner. I think it would be a fun dinner, dinner party. <laughs> I'd love to wait table. Lots of wine, I'm sure. <laughs> um, you have mentioned music as being mm -hmm. part of your life and growing up, and then, of course, mm -hmm. in Nashville. Um, tell us something about your favorite kind of music, songs, why. Right. What happened during your life that influenced that? So I began playing piano when I was about eight. And, uh, and when I look back on it, my sister was playing piano. And so, and I just wanted to be everything that my sister was. You know, <laughs> I think younger siblings are always like that, where I just looked up to her so much. And I wanted to play. And, um, and so I ended up playing through, um, took lessons through high school. Uh, and then studied music in college. And, uh, and so actually took some piano in college too um, and then began to sing. Um, singing has always been something that has been really important to me, singing and playing piano. Um, I most recently, my parents are beginning to downsize and to begin to think, what's our next step? And, uh, and so as they downsize, they called me the other day and said, we've got the piano that you grew up on and we'd like to bring it over. And they've been threatening this for five <laughs> years now. And so I said, well, I'll call the piano movers right now. <laughs> and so now I have that piano and, uh, and it's in my home. And I have a lot of memories of the early days of Eleanor and a bouncer or a swing right next to me and playing and singing. And she won't really stay still anymore to listen. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's... Uh, going to be a, a fact for a few more years here, but, um, but uh, those memories to me are so important and, and trying to introduce her to music. I think um, music spawns creativity and, uh, and it, it's the building blocks of life and, you know, sometimes in my lowest points, music has been there and whether that is, um, whether that was listening to country music or to, um, to more rock music in my in, in my high school days or whatever that was, um, music has always been a staple in my life of something that that can continue to uplift. And uh, I don't really have a necessary genre that I listen to. Um, I tell my husband I just listen to good music. And uh, and so, um, anyways, it's uh, my favorite band in the whole world is Ben Folds Five, who is actually from this area. Um, and my husband has noted that my, all of my favorite music has piano in it. And oh. so, and I think that's something that's important to me, but he is, um, he is a pianist and it's, if you haven't checked him out, it's, it's pretty rocking. I really oh, enjoy right. it. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, did you 
enjoy country music before you moved to Nashville? So a little bit. Uh, I didn't listen to it um, as frequently, uh, but I started, I kind of peeked into it, I guess, about my uh, senior year in high school. And uh, I kind of stumbled across, it was back when you had the radio, uh, the dial, yeah. you know, and I was trying to go to 107.5 or something, and I stumbled across a radio station. And I remember it was George Strait song. Uh, and uh, Baby Write This Down was the, what was, and I was like, this is good. <laughs> and, uh, and anyways, kind of kept listening to it and listening to it and listened to it through college. And then, of course, during my time out in Nashville, I feel like that's probably the majority of what I listened to. Yeah. And, uh, and it was, there's so many talented people. And um, I think that was one of the hardest parts of my job out at CMA was seeing people come in that were so wildly talented and so incredible that just never made it. They yeah. never got off the ground. And uh, it is very much about luck and being at the right place at the right time because there were so many talented yeah. folks that just never got the radio play. Whenever you're in Nashville Airport and you watch a plane unload, it's always somebody with an instrument. Absolutely. They're bringing it out and they're gonna make the big time. <laughs> Well, and now they have venues out yes, at the airport. They so they have a Tootsies out at the airport mm -hmm. where there's, um, we always joked that the, you could hear live music on Sunday morning and you could go walk down Broadway and there'd be five bands playing yeah. and there was always live music happening. And uh, it, Here's a question I never thought about, but you're sparking all mm -hmm. these wonderful things. Um, but uh, when you hear of Nashville, you hear of country music. What about other kinds of music in Nashville? Yes, I there are assume, lots of others. I assume there are others, and um, maybe all the way from classical to rock music mm -hmm. to um, Appalachian music, of course. And it's incredible how much um, <coughs> great music comes out there. Mm -hmm. uh, so there were some notable um, bands that came out, some rock bands. There was Paramore and Kings of Leon were there um, out of Nashville. Um, and then, of course, they have incredible classical music scene as well. They just built, I say just, it was probably 10 years ago. Okay. <laughs> uh, time flies. But uh, they had built an incredible symphony hall called a Skirmerhorn. Mm -hmm. And it w at the time that it was built, it was the most acu acoustically perfect building in, yeah. in the United States or in the world and incredible. And so um, you could just hear some of the most beautiful, wonderful music. Uh, but all kinds, um, you know, Elvis did so much recording there, and um, of course they have the Country Music Hall of Fame, but uh, they, even the uh, exhibits there would talk a lot about bluegrass, and yeah. uh, just a wide array. It depends on what you're looking for. If you're looking for it, you can find it. Neat. Um, as you thought about this conversation beforehand, <coughs> Are there things that you thought about saying or that you wanted to say or expected to be asked that haven't come up? Not, not really. I think that we've covered a lot of really great ground. And um, I just, I wanted to say how honored I am to be asked to do this. And, uh, and so it's, this is such a neat opportunity for me. And um, it's, it's been, I won't say difficult, but it's been a little harder than, um, than probably it would be outside of a pandemic of getting to know everyone. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so you meet people, but you meet them with masks on or, um, <laughs> and so there's been some hurdles that, um, that usually I, I, I consider myself um, really good with names and faces and things, and you add a mask to it. It's you're a little probably, bit harder. You're probably an expert in eyeglasses. Now, well, I know, I know it, I know it. And so um, people take their mask off, you won't recognize them. That's right. Well, I don't know if y'all do this, but I, um, when there's a mask on, I kind of just, I guess my brain fills in what I think yeah. the rest of their face would look like, and sometimes they don't match up. And uh, and so, and I, I know that must happen with people with me, and so I try to peel it off really quickly, six feet away, and put it back on. But, um, but I, you know, I think these opportunities for me are so important. And uh, getting to know this community, we were actually just talking about um, some of the educational aspects. Mm -hmm. um, they helped me shape how I talk to our residents of the future, how I talk to potential residents of the future. And I think that that's so important. 
Um, it, it's very clear to me that I could spend probably a full day talking or more talking about all the things that are offered here with, um, with Cindy and Brian and all the things that they cultivate and do for our residents. And um, so if there are things that you, that you or the people that are watching today that want to uplift or there's things that are really special, let me know. My, my door is always open, um, you know, even if I'm on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could, I could attest to the fact that the chairs on, in the little lobby in front of your office yes. are very comfortable. They are, there. they are. <laughs> it's a little You're waiting room. Time. <laughs> <laughs> Please take a number. No, 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 no. But, uh, but it, uh, those things are so important to me, yes. and especially as, as I learn um, really what makes River Landing tick. I think that that's really important. Um, so please come by, share anytime, and, uh, and I look forward to a time where we don't have to wear masks, if, if that will ever happen, I'm not <laughs> sure, but, um, but a return to normalcy and where we get to know everybody a little bit better. Well, other than the pandemic, because of course that has been, what, what's been surprising to you here? I think, uh, I talked a little bit about this, but the, I think the wait time, I think learning the, the, the wait list of, oh, mm -hmm. of five years um, or so, mm -hmm. uh, and it depends on what type of unit people are looking for. I think that was shocking to me in a way. Uh, I think that as we look at the baby boomer generation that's probably coming in um, and considering a CCRC like River Landing, I think that was really learning that it was double the size of the generation before it is, wow, wow, that is, uh, that could be, there, there was, there's just gonna be a shortage of CCRCs and I think that especially with such a high class place like River Landing, um, it's, that's been surprising to me. Uh, I think um, other than that, uh, just, uh, just how genuinely kind that, everyone has been. Uh, I think you always, you always see the outside and you mm. think, there's no way everybody can be that nice. Mm. Everybody, <laughs> when, when are the color, when is all they're yeah. gonna come off? But um, that has been surprising to me, that everyone has just really been helpful and uplifting and uh, I just feel very blessed and lucky to be here. Could I just go back to the profile thing for a second? Sure. Um, at River Landing and within the trade and industry in general, is it correct to assume that the entry age of people is going down? That's a great question. And uh, I know that River Landing skews a bit younger. Uh, yeah. And so I think our average age is 78. Uh -huh. And uh, and so we tend to, and maybe it's because of the golf course, maybe it's because right. of the active lifestyle. I'm not sure. Um, as I talk to people on the phone, for some reason, the magical age for them is 80. And, um, huh. But then we had, um, we had a resident recently join us uh, at one of our events. Francis Smith joined us. And he said, man, I should have come sooner. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm having a blast. Yeah. So I think um, that's the delicate balance of yeah. people enjoy their home and enjoy, um, enjoy their lives. Um, it is, I also, not sure I've ever asked this before, but is there an, an age limit, kind of a... 62 is the, young, the younger end, um, but we don't have an age cap. Yeah. Um, I think everybody knows that we, uh, the majority of our residents come in through independent living. Right. Um, and so that, uh, that tends to dictate an age, at, at, you know, a median age. Yeah. It's fascinating. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I'd love to, yeah, we could, we can uh, we'll, talk we'll, through all of this. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm ready, but. <laughs> this is my wheelhouse. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for having us in your wheelhouse. It's just, it's just been a lovely conversation. This has been great. Thank you both so much thank for you. having me. Right. Um, I hope you've um, seen how much we've enjoyed this and that you've enjoyed it too. Thank you for joining us. Next week, as I mentioned, we will start with our first um, resident conversation and we very much uh, hope you'll be able to join us then. 
thank you and good afternoon.